link today. Oh, oh. looks have gone all funny. Um, many people have remarked to me that I get all the treats. Mick Jagger, Duran Duran, and I only didn't get bad news because I lost the toss in the dressing room with Jules. So now, here is one of the most exciting moments of my life, a whole afternoon spent on the chaise long in Steve Strange's London Bijou Love Nest, talking to him about his respect for the law, his youth, his nightclub, the palace, and then he took the crew out for a night on the town, and I was just left on the chaise long. Well, here we are in your pop star pad, and it's an enormous sort of ornate French brothel style house, and you're not going to be here much longer. Well, I don't know about French brothel, but no, I have just bought a place up the road, which I do want to do out the way that I want it to be, but it's been great living here, because it is a great house. Mm. And one of the things that you won't have is Graham lurking outside in the street with his camera, so if you don't want him to know the truth about what it really looks like here, you better clear up, because he's coming. When you get the new place, how would you do it up? Because this is very, very ornate. Well, there's a guy that's just designed a club in Manchester called Ben Kelly, and the club is called the Hacienda. Yeah. And I like what he's done with that, and I've seen previous, like, st I mean, not that I want my place to be like a stage set or anything like that, but I've seen his work, and we've talked, and he's going to design to the interior for him. Lost amongst the crowd. But uh, I want the colour scheme to be sort of gold. Grey, basically. Yeah. Sort of a burgundy red and sort of touches of gold. Mm. So it's going to be very different to this place. Yeah. But, um, you know, I like to change as well. Mm. Well, I shall miss the family portraits. Do you ever worry that um, now that Visage is selling so many records, I mean, have done in the recent that months. That's great. Do you ever worry, though, that it's going to finish? Because it's very dependent on fashion. Or quite dependent on fashions. No, fashion can't sell a record. No, but your image is fairly marketable. <sighs> yeah, that's why it changes so much. So you are consciously aware of it? Yeah. I mean, maybe an image lasts three months, however long the record lasts until I get a new record out. I create a character, if that's what you want to call it, because the music comes first, and I adapt a character for the video that I want to put across. Visuals have become very much important um, presentation. People are bored with just seeing a band live on stage. That's why when we do anything live, I would like it to be more like an extravaganza type show with a lot of effects and maybe like a Busby Berkeley movie. Now, tell me just a bit about how you started going out because um, I won't insinuate you ever go on the Raz. I know this offends you, but you did start going out when you were very, very young. 13, 14 to Wigan Casino. And Wigan. that, yeah. But that was, I mean, it was great. Then, Steve. No, it was a great time for me. I mean, I learned a lot from it, and uh, it's sort of, I don't know, like, I was going around with a lot of older people and travelling 200 miles up to sort of Wigan from Wales, and people used to tend to think that you were crazy to go out to a dance, you know, to dance, which didn't start till 12.30 Saturday evenings or something. 
And then when you told them that they didn't have any drinks served, that it was all Coca-Cola and orange juice and things like that, and you didn't really care about girls because all you wanted to do was dance, and then they, they say, well, what time does it finish? And you'd say 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock in the morning, no girls, they don't serve drink. Oh, you gamble. No, it's not a casino, it's a disco. They think you've got, you know, they think you've gone a bit crazy. But it was good because it was like a meeting place. Don't you think that also um, mixing with all those kids, apart from the fact you did pick up some good dances, do you think <laughs> it might have given you a few bad habits? Yes, but bad habits that I learned from. Like what? Drugs, when I was 14. What sort and, of things um, were you doing? Especially as you had to stay awake all night to do some of the dances well, I've seen you That's what it was. Doing. It was amphetamines. But I got in trouble with the boys in blue, the police. And I learned a lesson from it, you know, and, and I knew that you can't play... I know now as well that you can't play with the boys in blue because they're always right. And I actually know, you know, that there's something... I want to go to America and Japan. There's a lot of money to be made there. So you don't play around with things like that anymore. And that's what I learned from it, you know. Mm. And it's so uh, you learn from mistakes. When I moved to London, I was working with Generation X, doing sort of graphics and stuff with Billy, Billy Idol. And um, I just got really disillusioned by the whole thing to do with punk rock and the way that it become like a uniform. Although at the beginning it was great, but then if you weren't wearing the sort of the latest Vivian Westwood collection and you change your image or whatever and your hair wasn't spiked out and you were going to concert, you know, they'd look at you and think, God, what, what, what's this? I mean, although that happens to me all the time, but... <laughs> um, I just got disillusioned and I, I mean, I didn't really try to create something. I just wanted to, to give people somewhere to go that were also fed up with going to them sort of things because it became like a threat. You didn't actually know if you were going there to see a band and going to walk out without having your head kicked in because it did become very violent. Basically because of the media and what the media turned it into, people were actually believing and like that they had to go to a concert to beat somebody up and things like that. When you were doing Club for Heroes, and Visage was incredibly successful, so really you didn't have to do the club. You just did it because you liked it. And it was very much a place where everyone went. Why do you think the minute you go, they all leave? What do you think the secret of your charm is? The, se the secret is we know how to run a great club. But then again, it was probably still more or less the same club when you left. Why do you think everyone else always goes with you? Um... I mean, how do you get people to come to your club? You can get a thousand people at a very little notice to one of your clubs. Two. How? 2,000, correction. How do you get them? Um, and well, how do you know instance, so many people? Well, I don't know them all. They could, well, for instance, the palace has got a great sound system. It's got a great lighting system. And if you've ever been into one of my clubs, you'll know that the atmosphere there is very electrifying. And it's like a great buzz that's going around. And uh, I think that people, when I move, they want to know what I'm doing next. And I think that the reason why they want to know and why they follow is because I learn from the mistakes and the next clubs get better than the last club. So they follow on because it is better. Oh, I bet you any money at this time of night it's going to be really empty. Well, I can't imagine. What time is it? About 10? Well, they don't really come until, like, the pubs close. And then all of a sudden it's, like, empty. But then all of a sudden it's just, like, packed full. You see the dance was sort of empty now. But then when you get, you get there, in. you get in, it's like full. Thank you, dear. What's that, Hi, Hayley. Hello. <laughs> Ooh, maybe we can get rid of this somewhere. <laughs> Stick it there. Right, so, what did it used to be? It used to be the music machine, wasn't it? Quite a while ago. I remember they had, a, um, some, they had a fire, and then it was shut down because the GLC decided that it was on oh the gas. Oh, who did it up? Um, the backing came from two people up north, two or three people from up north. Yeah. And then afterwards, well, as you can see, there's no beer cans on the floor. Yeah, but it's got a 
have Steve Strange live in the studio and he's pretending he hasn't realized he's live in the studio because we're doing a lot of walking to prove that we're both here and I'm not on casters. No, but you're keeping fit. Yes, I'm keeping fit. Tell me, Steve, about how you felt about Pleasure Boys, your last single, not charting. It did chart. Well, it, it didn't went to number chart 39, very high. 39. Um, it was all right. But, I mean, it, it was, for me, it was great that it went to the reaction from the business, like the media and like the anvil and night train and stuff that, that people did like the, the music and it was like a change and moving on and i think that the sound of visage is going to change much more but you can't just move in one direction and expect people to follow because you have to like break it to them gradually and i think the sound of visage is going to change more into like a, a band that is going to stabilize and actually go on the road and hopefully we'll go on the road in may hello but do you think that um, with people getting more used to the sound that the single, the next one will probably... Oh, he's flirting. Will do better than Pleasure Boys did because people are more accustomed to the new sound. I don't know. M maybe people don't like it, but I'm, I'm pleased with what we're doing. Mm. And I like the sound of what we're creating. And as long as we're pleasing our fans, which I think we are because they're sticking with us, it doesn't really mean to say that the media actually are liking the sound of the visit, but I want to move into a new direction and taking a risk is what we're doing. Mm. But hopefully, well, not hopefully, but I think like next year you'll see a lot of change in the, the music where not so much bands are concentrating so much on synthesizers. They're just going to be put in the background. That's my prediction anyway. I might be wrong. Well, we're surrounded here by all these nubile women that you've been chatting up. Aren't and they lovely? And tell me what you think makes a good club, because if anyone should know, you should steal. They make a good club. Well? Well, no, I mean, yeah, they make a great club, but also you've got to have a great sound system. And the Palace is the first club that we've actually, after three years, people have actually had the initiative to back us and have, you know, faith in us. And it's the sound system, the lights, and the people that create the atmosphere. And, you know, that's, we've just been voted the best club in Britain. Now, there's one odd thing about the palace is that all the good people actually go on a Thursday night. Why would you say Why don't that? you go? Because I'm at home in you're bed, not a good but person. everyone else. But well, you're in bed. Oh, of course. Um, no, well, you see, they'll all be gone on Tuesday soon. Oh, God. Everything's changing according to Have you all strange. been to the palace? However, this is a clip from a film that looks like it was filmed in the lavatories at the palace. You all right, mate? Too much to drink, eh? Hey? Hey. 